Hi guys, welcome once again to the Coffee and Heroes YouTube show. Once again, your weekly roundup of everything happening in the pop culture world. First up, as ever, we like to go into a few details on the store this week. So, a nice busy week, I have to say. It got really busy towards the end of the week, which was great to say. It, it's a bit of a strange one for us because we obviously want to have as big a community as possible and have people sitting in and having geeky conversations and all that kind of stuff. But it's just been a case of obviously having to do takeaway only coffees. We, we do like people to sit around a little bit as well. And again, all of our customers are, are great. You know, it's uh, all of our regulars. They know to sit good distances apart. They know how to make people feel safe walking into that environment. So we're very, very fortunate in that way. But just for the moment, we're, we're utilizing a takeaway coffee service and that kind of thing. So just to, you know, stay on the right side of uh, the law, shall we say. But yeah, really, really good week, as I say. Some cracking releases, as, as there always are. And, and certainly there's some fantastic stuff next week to move on to. In case you didn't see it, the, the video before this one on YouTube will be another What's in the Box one. We did a little unboxing video for the most recent CGCs that we received back. So you may have seen it, you may not have, just in case you didn't. What we'll always do is we, we like to show off the kind of stuff people are sending off. But at the same time, we don't want to give away grades that certain things are getting we leave it up to the customer themselves if they want to know the grades in advance or if they'd rather wait until they're picking them up to see. So I did cover a couple of the grades and you know they, they really did appreciate that. In case there is anything you're looking graded, we're actually going to be sending away another delivery next Friday. So that is the 30th of October. So we do have a couple of spaces free in there. If those spaces don't get filled, I'll just fill it with stuff from the store or stuff from my personal collection because I can't resist every time. But there are spaces available, so if you want to uh, get in on that, just pop in the store and let us know, and we'll certainly get you sorted. We've been doing a few improvements around the store as well. You know, we've been putting up a few new brackets, a few new displays. We have an entire uh, wall now of CGCs on display, you know, in these class brackets. It, it just means the store's a lot cleaner looking. It's a lot sort of sharper looking, if you will. You know, we, we changed the wall, where which was all just single issues up there, and... And to be honest, I always thought it looked a little bit messy, whereas now it just looks a little bit more, just a little bit more classy, I suppose, in design, for lack of a better term. But we're also putting up some new brackets as well, so we can put more uh, framed prints up, more canvases up. We've changed all the posters in the windows. We have a new sign coming for the outside of the store. So we're always looking to improve the store in any way we can. Any feedback's always appreciated. We want to make it a space where people want to come to and look forward to coming to. So, you know, if you have any suggestions, definitely throw them our way. You know, most of these things for changing, my dad comes up with, you know, have to give him his credit, I suppose. So, yeah, so the store's looking good. And, and again, we'll have a few more wee changes uh, on the way as well. But, you know, we're, we're here to talk about comics. And, and again, it was another great week this week with some fantastic titles. I always like to win my top three of the week. This week, I've got two DC, one indie, Marvel missing out again. Although in saying that, I thought Venom 29 was a pretty great issue, so I did. It was the fourth part, I believe, of Venom Beyond, and it was uh, pretty class. So, But DC always rises to the top for me. I'm an unabashed DC fan, but also a crack at indie title this week as well. So in terms of what I enjoyed the most anyway this week, so number one, Batman White Knight Presents, Harley Quinn. The one thing I will say about this, well, I will say many things about it. But the first thing I'll say about this is I think this has been badly advertised. This was advertised as it was going to be a new imprint that Sean Murphy was essentially going to spearhead the story. And he was going to bring in different writers and different artists to tell stories within the White Knight world. So for me, that meant that they were going to be the equivalent of side stories. They were never going to be the main story. And Murphy has already announced he will be doing a third White Knight uh, series called uh, Beyond the White Knight. But this one, it's written by Katana Collins, who is actually Sean Murphy's wife. Sean Murphy does have a story credit. He also does the cover. Uh, but the art in this one is uh, Mario Scalera, who I'm a big fan of. You know, it's I've spoke about it before with Black Science. It's a series that not enough people are reading. It's worth it for the art alone, but the storytelling is fantastic as well. So... Uh, the interior art is just mind-bogglingly good. But but the reason I say it's been badly advertised is because this is essentially White Knight 3. Uh, the story picks up two years after the end of the events of Curse of the White Knight. 
I don't want to throw spoilers out in case you haven't read White Knight yet. Obviously, some people prefer to read in trades, for example. And White Knight is a story that really deserves to be enjoyed, knowing as little as possible about it. But as I say, this picks up two years uh, afterwards. But I'm just going to try and show off a little bit of the art and the design. And as I say, Scalera, I think, is one of the best artists around. The black science work is incredible. You know, just look at the colours as well by Dave Stewart are fantastic. Look at the Batman he draws breaking into uh, this gentleman's club, if you will. So I really can't recommend this enough. It's going to be six issues in total. And it really is adding a lot, I think, to the White Knight mythos, you know, adding to the Murphyverse. How the Joker and Batman are utilised in this are great. But it's also very much Harley's story. You know, they call her into a case uh, to use her sort of criminal psychologist um, attributes. And I was really, really impressed with this. So uh, first pick of the week was uh, Hardy Quinn. I just spoke about Black Science there. So with Matteo Scalera being the artist on that, it's a Rick Remender written title. Again, follow, art, uh, follow creators, not characters. And again, I've followed the writer of Black Science, Rick Remender, to Scumbag. So Scumbag, you've got to love, first of all, any title that has the confidence to call itself some Scumbag. It also has the little tagline of the world's fate rests with the worst person on it. And I must admit, the artist on this, which is uh, Louis LaRosa, is someone I'm not overly familiar with. But I'm really going to be keeping an eye for their art, uh, for what else they do, because the art in this is awesome. It is so, so good and vibrant. Uh, it's got that really cool sci-fi, dirty, dingy, futuristic look to it. Really cool panel layouts. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much. Very funny title, I have to say. Really cool setup. Uh, really interesting world. I thought this was a cracking first issue. So it was, uh, you know, I love the little Bond joke on the back of it as well. So really great title. We sold out of it this week. I do have some more copies coming in though, because I, I think this is going to be pretty big. But yeah, fantastic title. Love it. And then the third one this week is actually not a single issue, but a hardcover trade. And it is the first trade written by James Tinian for Batman. So just in case anybody who's new to it isn't, doesn't know, so Tom King was writing Batman for a long time. He wrote 85 issues. So this is my collection of the Tom King stuff just here, all the hardcovers. And when Tinian took over, I don't think people knew what to expect. They didn't know whether it was going to be... Uh, a, a bit of an abrupt change from the Tom King stuff they were enjoying. They didn't know if he was going to carry on any threads from what Tom King was doing, or if he was just going to just write his own thing and that was it. The answer is sort of somewhere in the middle, you know, he, he's followed, I only thought about this recently, but what Tinian has done, he's followed the Scott Snyder model from New 52. So what Snyder did was when he came on to Batman, they relaunched with a brand new number one. He created a brand new cabal of villains. So he created the Court of Isles and did this amazing story. I mean, if you've ever watched this YouTube stuff before or listened to any of the podcasts or even been in store, I wax lyrical about Court of Isles all the time. It is a stalwart in my top three Batman stories of all time. And brilliant for new readers as well. But Tinian's done something similar here. So this is the first arc, which is called Their Dark Designs. And it introduces new characters such as the designer, such as the underbroker, that kind of thing. But it's also, it, it covers sort of his first nine issues, this uh, hardcover trade. But then it also is setting up for what is then Joker War, which is his second big arc. And again, Snyder did the same thing. Do his first arc, Court of Owls, and then he did Death of the Family, which was his Joker story. But this is just an absolutely gorgeous hardcover. I mean... It's already stunning in its design in terms of, you know, the, the art that's chosen and that's in the dust jacket. But certainly if I'm reading graphics, hardcovers, you know, absolutes, omnibuses, anything like that, I tend to take the dust jacket off so it doesn't get damaged in any way. But just again, look at the design of this. It's just freaking awesome. But yeah, I'm a big, big fan of this, I have to say. I had my misgivings at the start with the first issue or two. Just because it was slightly abrupt in terms of it was a it was a change in style from um from Tom King's run, but what they have done is brilliant and they have built it fantastically well. Just a really great story. Introduces the character Punchline, I should say as well, who for a minute there was the hottest thing in comics. 
I mean, Pong Tang's an interesting character, but I think everyone thought she was going to be the next Harley Quinn, but I'm not sure that's uh, entirely fair. But yeah, so this, uh, not only does it include Batman 85 to 94, it also includes Batman Secret Files number three, which is a one-shot exploring sort of Batman cases. But if you're looking at jumping on point for modern Batman, if you want to read a new voice on Batman, you want to see spectacular art on Batman, I cannot recommend this enough. Brilliant start, beautifully packaged. What more can you ask for? So, yeah, those were my three picks of the week. Shock Horror Batman was involved in two of them. <laughs> um, but that was this week. What's coming next week? Of course, the first question is... Deceased is a negative, I'm afraid. I'm going to superimpose over the top of this my latest reply from Diamond because... I want people to know that I'm consistently chasing this, I'm consistently chasing some sort of clarification, but I just keep getting fobbed off time and again. And again, I'll superimpose the response email I got, but it basically came down to stop bugging us when we have stuff to tell you, we'll tell you. Well, I'm sorry, that is not really good enough when we have over a hundred issues already paid for, already ordered, and people are waiting on them. We just want a bit of clarity, even if it's a case of it won't be out for another six weeks. We'll release three, four, five, six together, whatever. They need to actually start communicating with comic stores and actually informing us because then we can inform customers. You know, it's it's become a bit of a running joke. You know, anytime I put up posts on Facebook, like first out of the box or, you know, today's new titles that are dropping, the first question asked is, is the Seast out this week? Which first of all shows they don't watch this. But second of all, it's, you know, we all want to read it. You know, there's this desire. It's such a brilliantly put together story. And, you know, Tom Taylor, you know, and Trevor Harrison are ultimately suffering because we can't get to read it. So we'll have to wait and see on that one, guys. I genuinely do keep chasing it week after week after week. And it's actually the first thing I look for on the invoice. But it's a negative for next week. I do apologize. But there is a ton of great stuff. So next week we'll be getting the previews book. So that'll be for the titles coming out in January. Uh, I'm going to chat about one or two of those things later on uh, in this show. But as ever, I like to go through a lot of the titles that certainly I'm looking forward to and certainly some of the bigger titles of the week. So Amazing Spider-Man is continuing with this Last Remain storyline. With Spidey, you're sort of getting an issue a week at the moment. And the next one is Amazing Spider-Man 51, which is next week. We have Backguard 50, which is the last issue of Backguard. It's also a wrap-up issue for Joker War. I have a sneaky suspicion in Batman continuity going forward that Barbara's going to go back to the Oracle uh, persona, but that's just a guess. I haven't read anything ahead. But I have really enjoyed Batgirl and the Joker War stuff. We've got new Batman Superman, so number 13 of that. We got the big one. Batman 3 Jokers next week. Cover A, cover B, 1 to 25, 1 to 100. Premium variant G, premium variant H, premium variant I, premium variant I. And I'll show you guys on the channel next week. Premium variant 1 to 450. Oh yes, this is my reward for ordering so many copies and taking a risk on this title. But you guys have responded brilliantly. Sales have been fantastic. Feedback on the title has been fantastic. And we get number three next week. So really, really looking forward to that. Uh, there's an original graphic novel out next week from Ram V, which is called Blue in Green, which looks awesome. I've ordered quite a few copies of this in because I think this is going to be a big seller. Uh, Ram V, of course, is writing Catwoman at the moment, Justice League Dark for DC. He's uh, part of this future state uh, mini event in January so definitely a name to watch out for his indie work is even better than his DC work to be honest if you ever get to read a, a series called The Savage Shores highly recommend it if this was Vicky talking she would say it's the big one Canto Hollow Men number three next week as well so always looking forward to that what else have we got we've got Dark Knight's Death Metal Rise of the New God I should have said it didn't quite make my picks of the week but I thoroughly enjoyed the Robin King one shot that came out this week Department of Truth number two, what an issue one that was. I do have second prints of number one coming. Weirdly, they're not coming this week. I would have thought that you would release a number one second print on the same day as number two. But hey-ho, there you go. Uh, what else we got? We got Fantastic Four Antithesis number three coming next week. We have Hellblazer number 11. Hellblazer's been a big seller in the store. People really digging that. We've got Philadelphia number nine. Again, if you listen to the podcast, you know how much we talk about Philadelphia and how great it is. We've got Neil Bider Returns, number six, a personal favorite of mine. But as well as number six next week, we've also got the trades coming in of the first five issues of Neil Bider Returns, 
which is actually, I hope this doesn't confuse people, but it's actually Neil Bider Volume 7, which is called Neil Bider Returns. So Neil Bider's a brilliant series, absolutely adore it. Myself, it's uh, Joshua Williamson and Mike Henderson. And the first are sort of long story of it was 30 issues. So there's six volumes and then this will be volume seven. Although you could jump into this. It is designed to um, for new readers as well, but I would highly recommend those first 30 issues or for six trades. What else we got? We got a pretty class looking indie title called Phantom Star Killer coming next week. I know Roddy's excited for that one. We have Sex Criminals 69 coming next week. Love Sadarsky's humor. Shang-Chi number two is coming next week. We've got uh, Spawn 311 next week. Now there's there's a few people in Spawn on store, but the main reason this is going to be a big one next week, and we do have, we've limited amounts of them, so if you're interested in it, do get in touch. But we have some of the uh, the Todd McFarlane cover coming, which is a tribute to Chadwick Boseman, and it's Spawn in the uh, Wakanda Forever Black Panther um, salute. So... The pre-orders and that are pretty strong as well. So we don't have loads of spares, guys. So if you're interested, do get in touch and let us know. Uh, we've got Strange Academy number four next week. We've got Suicide Squad number 10. So absolutely digging that run. Unfortunately, that's close to coming to an end. We do have a title next week, TMNT, The Last Ronin. Now, this has been a bit of a contentious one because Last Ronin was due out originally a couple of months ago. Then apparently the sales for it were that big, IDW started taking a closer look at it. Then they weren't happy with the art produced. They asked them to redo the art and then they shipped them this week. But they, I understand they've shorted a lot of retailers. We only have enough cover, copies of this for pull lists. We don't have any spares at all. It's a title that suddenly started, you know, we, we tried to push it a few months ago. We, we thought it looked great. We thought it was really interesting. And this is a, a, the kind of title that, sort of proves how important it is to pre-order stuff in comics because it's a title that I can see already. There was copies of it selling on eBay in America last week for $50 because they know that retailers have been shorted. But again, we, we don't have any spares of this. There is going to be a second print. So if you like the sound of the story, get in touch and we'll sort you the second print. But in terms of first prints, we do only have enough for, for pull lists at this point. So uh, yeah, it's number one of five for that. Uh, what else have we got? We've got Undiscovered Country 9 coming, so always loving that. We've got uh, Wonder Woman 765 coming. And then we finish off with, I think, the midpoint of X of Swords, which is a one-shot called X of Swords Stasis. So for all you X-Men fans, obviously the last few weeks you've had at least three or four titles a week. X of Swords, Part 2, Part 3, Part 4, etc., etc. But next week there's no other X titles except this one shot, so I think this is the midpoint. The start of X of Swords, you had a one shot called X of Swords Creation. Then the midpoint here, you've got X of Swords Stasis. And then there's going to be one at the end, which I believe is X of Swords Destruction. So, uh, yeah. So that's what to look forward to next week. As I say, tons of great stuff there, guys. Get in touch if anything tickles your fancy. Again, I can't stress enough, you know, comics can be limited. If there's something you're looking forward to, get in touch with us and we will guarantee it for you for cover price. I can't emphasize this enough with the pre-order system. But it just means you're not going to be paying double or triple or more than that um, on other sites or on eBay or whatever. We will always sell a cover price in the first month, two months of release minimum. And if it's on your pool list, it's cover price no matter what. I don't care if TMNT is selling for $50 a book. I'm not going to do that. It'll be sold at cover price. So that's me finished with my high horse uh, and that's what's coming next week so we'll just jump on to uh, a bit of news this week so there's quite a few interesting bits and pieces to get through first up of course Snyder Cut news because that's all I use this YouTube channel for oh I'll be honest at this point even I'm getting a little drained with the Snyder Cut news I just want to watch it I'm glad it's a real thing now and I'm glad all the campaigning worked to get it um, to get it to a point where it's going to come out but, you know, just stop sharing stuff with us. Just work on it and make it as good as you can. So there was news in the last week. There are a couple of actors coming back to engage in the reshoots for uh, the Snyder Cup. So you've got uh, Joe Manganiello, uh, who was going to play Deathstroke, uh, Slade Wilson. He, I don't know if you remember, there was footage before when it was going to be a Ben Affleck uh, solo Batman movie that he was going to write and direct. And he was going to utilize Deathstroke as the main villain. And he shot some sort of test footage that looked really, really good. And then there was that after credit stinger in uh, the Joss Whedon cut of Justice League. 
Apparently the after credits stinger was going to be different in the Snyder Cut and I think he was going to have more of a prominent role. So we'll be seeing him back uh, as he is engaging in the reshoots. One that did surprise me, I have to admit, um, was they're bringing Jared Leto back to do some reshoots. Now obviously Jared Leto had only been in Suicide Squad and nothing else, but he is going to be in Justice League. Will we see a Batman uh, Joker sort of face off? We'll wait and see. Jared Leto is always an interesting one. I think he is a really good actor. I, I'm not overly fond of what he did in, as the Joker in Suicide Squad, but I do also think we got to give him the benefit of the doubt in that he shot so much more footage. We could have got more of a sense of what the character was and what he was trying to do. So I'm more than happy to sort of give him fair game, so to speak. But, you know, he's, he's got a lot of work to do to convince people, especially after Joaquin Phoenix just knocked it out of the park as Joker and Todd Phillips, Oscar winning Joker. So, but it's interesting to see him back. It ties this world together. It, it's, it's a way of utilizing the characters that people are already familiar with from the, I want to say, it ill-fated at this point, almost DC Universe. So we'll wait and see. But I've said it before, I'll say it again on the Snyder Cut. He has nowhere to hide with this. He has been given everything he wants. He's got the fans backing. He's been given all the money in the world for it. He's been given actors back to do reshoots. I mean, they're already doing reshoots with Ben Affleck. Ray Fisher and Amber Heard. There is no excuse. So please be good. So yeah. I mean it's it's going to be on HBO Max. And I thought it was just worth noting. There was some news on HBO Max this week. It hasn't made it this side of the world just yet. Which is a shame. But I really hope it does. Because obviously I want to watch the Snyder Cut the day it comes out. And I don't think it will get a same day disc release. And I'm a law abiding citizen. So I want to watch it in the best possible quality and, and, and the best possible format. So, but uh, AT&T, who own Warner Brothers and who have spearheaded HBO Max and so forth, uh, in the last uh, three months of this year, they have doubled the amount of people who have started watching HBO Max. Uh, this means at the end of September, HBO Max subscribers in the US reached 38 million, exceeding the company's initial year-end 36 million target. So people are clearly excited with what they're doing. They love the content on HBO Max. There's a part of me that's, that is sort of like another streaming service really, but there does look to be a lot of quality on it. So, and then all the DC stuff will definitely have me interested. So I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Apparently there is gonna be a worldwide HBO Max launch in 2021. Obviously with the Snyder Cut, we don't have a date. It, it just 2021, it could be February, it could be December, who knows? We'll wait and see. I mean, with the way movies are going and cinemas are going and you just don't know, you know, when we're going to get movie um, movie screens and cinemas going again. I have a sneaking suspicion cinemas on the way out. I hate saying that. I'm a massive movie fan. But I, I did see there was a story today that there's rumours going about that Apple TV are trying to buy the exclusive rights to No Time to Die, the new James Bond movie. And if they do that and release that at home before a theatre, I think the whole theatre model is in trouble. But... That's for another. Uh, that's for another day. Uh, I did see a little bit of news this week from uh, Winter Soldier TV show. So this is again another streaming service I'm going to have to sign up for with Disney Plus. But uh, yeah, John Wick creator Derek Kolstad, he has been writing and um, part of the creative team for Falcon Winter Soldier. So it's going to be six episodes, a direct follow up to Endgame in terms of the timeline, and it's going to follow Falcon and Winter Soldier. So Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. So one of the things he said was, what I will say that there are characters from the earliest Marvel movies that are coming back. We're laying them in and reinventing them in the way that's going to shift the storytelling structure. It's awesome. Here's what I'll say. Growing up, everyone would give someone like Robin abuse. But Robin's pretty badass and became pretty badass in the comics. We're taking secondary characters and putting them in the primary roles and as a result, they're cooler. They're more interesting. There's more humanity, more longing, more suffering and coming to grips with who they are. So they have already confirmed that uh, Daniel Brühl is going to be back as Helmut Zemo. Emily Van Kamp's coming back as Sharon Carter. And there's also US Agent has also been confirmed as a character in this as well. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. I mean, Winter Soldier is my favorite Marvel movie. Captain America is probably my first Avengers, probably my favorite origin movie. Alongside Guardians of the Galaxy. And... They're, they're just the characters I love to follow. And I feel it is made for this format. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Uh, one thing I did see this week, and th there will be more information on this soon because we'll be getting the previews books, as I say, next week. 
but as everybody knows, Marvel have now acquired the rights to the Aliens franchise and Predator franchise and all this kind of stuff. So Marvel have, this seems to be the first wave of what they're doing to introduce people to the idea that they have the rights to these characters. There's going to be a spate of variant covers coming in January, going across so many titles. And I'm going to say them really slowly here so I can superimpose images over the top. But you can look forward to these. As far as I am aware, these are going to be free to order. Don't quote me on that until I see the previews order for them next week, but I think they're going to be free to order. So what you have is Spider-Woman 8, Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Javier Garon. x Force 16, Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Salvador La Roca. Marauder 17, Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Salvador La Roca. Amazing Spider-Man 56 is going to be a variant cover by Mark Bagley. Avengers 41 is going to be a Marvel vs. Aliens cover by Lenal Yu. We have Black Widow number 5, which is going to be a Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Terry Dodson. We have Black Cat number 2, which is going to be Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by, of course she had to be somewhere, Peach Momoko. We have Captain America 27. This is a Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Ivan Chavron. Captain Marvel 25, which is a Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Jimmy McKelvey. Daredevil 26, this one is class. This is a Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Raz Raza. Fantastic Four 28, I really like this one as well. This is a play on the original Fantastic Four number one. This is done by Joshua Cassara. You have Guardians of Galaxy 10, which is a great nod to Aliens, James Cameron's movie. And this variant is done by Pepe Larraz. Immortal Hulk, uh, Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Declan Shelby. Iron Fist, Heart of the Dragon, number one. Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Kim Jacinto. Iron Man, number five. Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Jung Yoon Yoon. Keenan Black number three, Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Valerio Gian Giordano. Uh, Miles Morales, Spider Man number 22, Marvel vs. Alien cover by Valerio Shiti. Shang-Chi number five, pretty badass cover, I have to say. Uh, Marvel vs. Alien cover by Iban Coelho. Thor number 11, this seems to be the most divisive cover. I personally like it. Uh, this is cover by Daniel Warren Johnson. And then what else we have? We have Venom 32. This is definitely one of the standouts for a lot of people. This is the Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Ryan Brown. Wolverine number 9, uh, which is another one by uh, R.B. De Silva, Marvel vs. Alien variant cover. X-Men 17, Marvel vs. Alien variant cover by Russell Dorman. Whew, that's a lot of variant covers. There is a part of me that sort of thinks, you know, all the money they've spent on artists doing the variant covers for this, they could have easily hired them to do a six issue mini series, uh, have three titles going at once. But if this is a way of introducing them to the Marvel Universe, that's cool. You know, you've got some cool art. As I say, guys, I think they're going to be free to order. So if you're interested in any of the covers, do get in touch. I sort of let away, uh, give away what was going to be my next story there, which was Marvel announcing a new Iron Fist series. Um, so this one is going to be written by Larry Hama, which is uh, big news for G.I. Joe fans. And the artist is David Wachter, and it's called Iron Fist, Heart of the Dragon, a new six issue mini series. Someone is killing the ancient dragons that power the heavenly cities and only Iron Fist and the deadly weapons can stop them. If they can discover who they are in time. Zombie armies, mystical portals, dragon hearts, some of the Marvel Universe's deadliest fighters all converge in one action-packed extravaganza and the fate of all worlds hangs in the balance. So looking forward to that. I, I've been getting into a bit of Iron Fist recently. I, I'm always playing catch up with a lot of old Marvel stories. You know, I make no secret of the fact my knowledge is more DC based than indie based, but I'm reading more and more Marvel and I recently just picked this bad boy up. So Immortal Iron Fist. I have been told that this is one of the absolute best runs. Uh, so this collects Immortal Iron Fist 1 to 16 in the annual. Immortal Iron Fist Orson Randall and the Green Mist of Death number 1. And material from Immortal Iron Fist, The Origin of Danny Rand and Civil War Choosing Sides. 
In terms of creators working on this, I mean, come on, it's a who's who. You've got Matt Fraction writing, you've got Ed Brubaker writing, and you've got David Aja on art, which essentially means you've got uh, Fraction and Aja, who did such a wonderful job on Hawkeye, which again, I'm a huge fan of. So looking forward to tucking into that. I should say with my, you know, back reading as well and catch up reading, I read the first volume of Absolute Sandman and holy moly, that thing is a masterpiece. So number one is back on the shelf. Number two is coming off it later this evening. Uh, what else we got? So in terms of Marvel, just a couple of wee stories left. So in terms of Marvel, there is now a checklist out for Keenan Black. Keenan Black is massive. There, there's no getting away from it. Clearly the pre-orders are huge because they keep announcing more and more series. I do like to stress to people that a good event, you shouldn't need everything, but comic collectors like myself can be OCD and want everything so you have the whole story. Obviously you see the Absolute Carnage app, um, Omnibus Behind there which collects everything. I'm sure there'll be something similar for Keenan Black. But in the meantime, just check out the checklist for this. So you've got Symbiote Spider-Man, Atlantis Attacks, Black Cat, you've got Keenan Black itself, Keenan Black Handbook, Keenan Black Immortal Hulk, Iron Man, Doctor Doom, Namor, Spider Woman, The Union, Venom, Daredevil, Deadpool, Guardians, uh, Gwenom vs. Carnage, Black Knight, Planet of the Symbiotes, Thunderbolts, Return of the Valkyries, Savage Avengers. Whew, there's a lot of titles in this, guys, and that's only as far as January, uh, when you're as far as Keenan Black number three of five. So pick and choose characters you like. Uh, they should always just add texture, add give you added value to the story, but they shouldn't be important, but we'll see. Uh, and again, you can either come into us and say, look, give me it all and we'll get you it all in, or you can pick and choose characters and we're more than happy to do that. So that's that. Uh, two things to finish off with. One is Boom Studios are gonna be celebrating lo a local comic store day with some foil variant covers. So local comic shop day, it's being held on November 25th. It's always, it's always a, a sort of a mini event every year and what they'll do is they'll offer exclusive covers, hard covers, uh, variant covers, that kind of thing that you can only get in your local comic shop and they give us the chance to order them in advance. So in terms of the boom ones, they're going to be doing foil covers and as far as I'm aware, they're going to all be cover price or close to cover price. They're not, you know, double digit prices, that kind of thing. But what they've announced is Mighty Morphing number one, local comic shop day foil variant by Goni Montes. Power Rangers number one, local comic shop day foil variant by Peach Momoko. There's that name again. Uh, June House of Atreides number two, local comic shop day foil variant by JG Jones. You have Lumberjane 75, local comic shop day foil variant by Kat Lay. And the best of them all, if you ask me, and the one we'll undoubtedly be ordering the most of, it's something that's killing the children, number one. Local comic shop day foil variant uh, covered by Werther Deladera. These will be limited, guys. We don't order in loads of these um, because they're, they're for titles that already exist. Uh, but in some ways, they might be a good way of trying a title that you haven't before. Something is killing the children is a good example. Number one can be a little tricky to get a hold of. So these mostly appeal to sort of variant collectors, that kind of thing. But... They are going to be limited and the order's going in the next couple of days. So if there's any that appeal to you, do get in touch with us. And I'm just going to finish off with one last thing. And that is that this week, Vicky and I decided to start watching Cobra Kai. And holy crap, that show is so good. Uh, seven episodes in a row on Thursday of season one. Finished the last three episodes on Friday. Be tucking into uh, season two this weekend, I'm sure. But I did see that it's proven to be a massive smash hit for Netflix. Obviously, Cobra Kai, you know, direct follow-up to the Craddy Kid movies, focusing more on Johnny, but Danny is a massive part of it as well. It originally started off on YouTube and sort of gained the cult following, and then Netflix took a bit of a gamble on it, brought it to their streaming service the two seasons, but also announced three and four. And apparently, in early September, there was over 50 million member accounts watched it. It is so good, guys. I'm not a big Craddy Kid guy. Uh, but this show is superb, hits all the right buttons, nostalgic, characters to root for, grey areas, um, deals with the themes of getting older and the next generation coming through, maybe I'm just getting old these days, but I, I can't recommend it enough, I mean people have been telling me to watch it for ages so I'm probably telling you all things here that you already know, but I just wanted to throw a bit of love out for it. 
There is also a graphic novel which I think focuses on some uh, stories from Johnny's past and I'm going to be picking that up myself because I'm going to have to, you know, get more Cobra Kai. So yeah, that is going to do it for us this week on the Coffee and Heroes show. Hope you guys enjoyed it as always. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys in store next week. If you haven't already, do check out the uh, previous YouTube stuff with CGC, What's in the Box. We also uploaded a couple of cool podcasts this week, uh, a new reviews one, and also interviews with creators Rich Dueck and Alex Cormack. So give that a wee listen to as well. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Have a lovely weekend. Take it easy.